This is my X-Ray SJ736 blank. It's uh, 7 foot 3 inches, but I'm going to cut 3 inches off of the butt section to make it 7 foot. I got enough 7 foot 3 X-Ray blanks. Uh, I, like a little, I like 7 foot rods a little bit better. So I'm going to use uh, my Dremel 200 with a metal cutting blade on the end of it. And I got it taped off. The tape is so the blade don't slide when you touch it and it also helps uh, keep the fibers together when you cut through the blank. crooked of a cut but I'll take some sanding paper and uh, sand this edge down and I'll even that cut up a little bit. You can see I sanded it up real nice and smooth and even. Use my Dremel tool with a sanding attachment or you can just use a regular just piece of sandpaper. But my 7 foot 3 blank is now a 7 foot blank. Okay, I'm getting ready to start on my fifth build now. Got everything laid out in front of me. I wanted to show you the components. Got the blank sitting right there. That is another x-ray blank. NFC x-ray SJ736. It's a uh, heavy power, rated up to one ounce. See, I got my guides there. I believe uh, my first guide is going to be a size 7. Second guide is going to be a size 6, and then I'm going to have 8 size 5 guide. Got my hook keeper and my tip top there. Now these are uh, gunmetal SIC guides made by Fuji. The tip top is a Fuji Arowana Titanium SIC. And I'll Four out of my five builds, I used all different carbon handles. This is going to be another different one. This is the NFC uh, EFX Carbon Tex carbon handle. Now, the, the difference in this one is it has a little bit of a soft touch to it. So it gives a little bit of grip, unlike the, the G2 from American Tackle. So... It's kind of hard to explain. It's almost like a suede filling. It's not as soft as a wind grip or anything, but it's it's carbon with a little bit of a, a soft touch to it. Again, I got this from NFC, same uh, producer as the blank I got, which is made by uh, Gary Loomis. Got some new thread. It's kind of a multicolor thread, black and gray. That I'll be using on the guides. That's an American Tackle Carbon Razor Reel Seat. I have uh, used one of these previously and it's probably my favorite so far so I got another one. The reason I like this one so much because it's exposed on the top and the bottom so when your reel sits on top it will uh, transmit sensitivity through the reel that way also. And then when you put your fingers on the bottom, you can have direct contact that way also. And you should see, I keep one thumbnail pretty long, cut the rest of them. And that's so when uh, I do thread wrapping, I can use that thumbnail to push over the thread. So, excuse my long thumbnail there. Anyways, I love this... Uh, carbon real seat here pretty sweet looking of course you need an insert for these type of real seats which will go over the blank the real seat fits over that that will sit just like that trimming will fit in between the, the grip and the real seat of course I got my American Tackle G2 Carbon sleeve here which will cover the 
threads over here and that will be used to loosen and tighten my uh, real seat here handle section is pretty much going to look like that when it's all glued on which is a pretty nice look and uh, the first thing I'm going to do on the blank here is uh, find the spine of the blank and then I'll begin reaming out the inside of my handle. Now I'm going to mix some epoxy glue to glue my handle down. This has about a 40 minute work time after you mix it. I'm going to mix it about one to one equal parts, part A and part B. Say a good minute or two and it should be good to go. Okay now this NFC uh, Carbon Tech grip only has about a three inch arbor in it. So I want to mostly put my glue about right there. I got a China marker mark right there. So from about right there to right there is where the arbor is going to be. Of course when I slide it down it's going to push the glue down a little bit. But there's going to be nothing I can really do about that. Before I touch my carbon grips, I'm going to clean my fingers here, make sure I ain't got any glue on it. And I'm just going to slide it down and try not to touch this glue with the hollow part here. grip has a butt cap that goes in the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the butt cap so I can get that in there. It's mostly putting the glue at the bottom three-fourths of it. So when I slide it on, it's going to push it up towards the top anyway. Of course, there's always going to be some cleaning to do afterwards. I have to get all the huge excess glue off first. And I'll take uh, some alcohol and clean it up real nice. pretty good that's the handle assembly right there one of the easiest things to do just ream it out put some glue on okay I mix some more glue up and I'm gonna put some glue up so I can slide my insert down over it Now, 
This is going to be actually a really, really tight fit. My insert isn't quite sliding all the way down to my uh, grips here. So hopefully I can get it close enough to where my real seat isn't going to be exposed. Hopefully this glue will give it a little bit of lubrication to make it slide down a little bit further. I think if I wouldn't have cut three inches off of this blank, I might not even have needed an insert. It would have been a little bit thicker down here. And I may have uh, just been able to put the real seat straight onto the blank. I'm just twisting it and sliding it back off to make sure I get some glue coverage. Uh, it's wanting to stop about right there, so I have to try and force it down as far as I can here. Which I didn't try to force it down too much without the glue on because if I did then I might not be able to get it back off so I wanted to get the glue on first it seems like I may be able to get it down far enough here go ahead and wipe this excess glue off That's about as far I'm going to be able to push it down though. But I think it's going to be just enough to where it's going to cover the exposed part of my real seat. So now I'll put some glue on the insert. So I'd slide my real seat over that. Just need to put some just at the end of it here. Put some more down at this end. Putting it on pretty thick right here because I'm going to side the real seat on. It's gonna Push it all down a little bit. Make sure the real seat trigger is at the bottom where I mark the spline of my rod. Now I just need to get a rag, some alcohol, and clean up all this glue. These crevices where the real seat is exposed. Okay, I have uh, my handle assembly all done. This is the NFC Carbon Tex full grip handle. This is the American Tackle G2 Carbon Razor real seat. Underneath that is the G2 Carbon insert. I have my American Tackle G2 Carbon grip sleeve. I have a winding check there and a trim in there in between the real seat and the grips. I think it's a pretty sweet looking setup so far. I haven't glued on my foregrip sleeve just yet but I know I do that later. Next, I'm going to be putting my guide bands on to hold my guides in place while I uh, perform the static testing. I'm most likely going to be doing another spiral wrap. I might even try a, a new one called a KG hook wrap. I have 10 guides in total, not including the tip top.
Okay, so I'm mixing with my G4 epoxy up. I'm getting ready to put a coat of epoxy on my guide wrappings. Mix together some glue here. I'm getting ready to glue down this foregrip sleeve on top of the threads to my reel seat here. I usually do this earlier, but for some reason I just saved it for later this time. I think that's going to be pretty good for now. So once I get it on there, I'm going to spin it a few times, pull it back off a little bit so it spreads the glue around. Now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with a paper towel. usually come in with the paper towel to get the big gunks off first and I'll come in with the microfiber towel a little bit of alcohol and uh, try and clean it up a little bit now I'll just give that a little bit of time to dry
Now I'm just creating the border for my uh, logo. Logo is going to go in between this and where I put my hook keeper at. So I got a mark made here with a china marker to know how far I want to go over with my thread. But I know I need to go about an inch over, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that now so I don't get any uh, white chalk all over my thread. Go ahead and put in my tie-off loop. That's going to be my borders for my decal right there. Put my custom decal on top and I'll have my rod specs on the bottom. Just trying to create a smooth surface for my decal to go over. I'm just putting all my decals right now. Got my broad spec decal that I got custom done this time since I cut uh, three inches off the blank. You'll be able to see it better once I pull the plastic film off. better the flash from the camera is making a pretty solid glare but I just put my uh, custom decal logo on here just trying to burnish it down a little bit better okay I'm gonna go ahead and pull the film back 